double sided VPC or double sided virtual port channel. In this video, I am going to talk about the double sided VPC. You know that double sided VPC is a configuration where two access layer switch forming VPC domain, these two access switch, uh, switch three and switch four, are connected to two aggregation layer switch, switch one and switch two, okay, forming another VPC domain through a big fat VPC, up to 32 member ports can be available in this, uh, for example, virtual port channel. Double-sided VPC with, uh, for example, for example, 32-way port channel or 16-way port channel is the second specific implementation of access device dual attached to VPC domain, okay? This type of design leverage the maximum port channel capability of the access device forming a VPC domain. Upper VPC domain, the VPC domain one, for example, is usually used as uh, the as aggregation layer in the, for example, data center, and this can be layer two or, or layer three boundary. Downer VPC domain is usually used as access layer, and I mean this means that this is the layer two only. You can use the VPC domain one, VPC domain two for this two VPC domain, or maybe you uh, need to, you, uh, you want to configure VPC domain one, again here VPC domain one. It's better to use the same number, but it's not mandatory. Look at here. F uh, after configuring this scenario, actually we have two logical switch. The first is switch one and switch two that contain this VPC domain one, uh, that uh, create this VPC domain one, and also we will have a VPC domain two contain switch 3 and switch 4 finally we can because this switch 1 and switch 2's links these links okay now can uh, for example aggregate with e with each other and come and create one port channel uh, can contain can do interaction with this uh, with the lower port channel between the uh, in the VPC domain too. Look at here. This blue area is our VPC finally. Now in v in this VPC, we have all of these links bandwidth. Okay. Let me to show you how we can configure this scenario. This is uh, the this, this is an interesting scenario. Double sided VPC. We should configure two VPC domain. VPC domain one and VPC domain two. And finally, we will have VPC uh, or virtual port channel between these two. VPC. VPC domain. Let me to show you how we can configure this scenario. In this scenario, after that, we can continue the configuration. Okay, starting from the switch one and switch two. Don't forget, in this scenario, I'm using the ETH114, for example, ETH114 for the peer keep alive link. ETH114 is a link for peer keep alive link okay because of that first we should configure the uh, eth 114 in one vr if you know that for con for configuring the vpc or and also double sided vpc first we should configure the a vrf for peer keep alive link after that we should assign that vrf to the peer keep alive interface and finally we should enable the keep alive let me to show you how we can configure this scenario starting from the switch one this is the switch one configuration uh, first command is conf t and also host name is switch one this is the uh, initial part of configuration in switch one switch one is this switch and you know that i'm going to configure vpc domain one here the first command is enabling feature vpc first you should enable the feature vpc after that you should configure one vrf uh, for example vrf context vpc ka this vra vrf uh, uh, will be used uh, for the keep alive after that we are uh, we should assign this vrf to the ETH114, let's go to the interface ETH114. First, we should convert this interface to the rotate port with the no switch port command. After that, we should assign the VRF VPCKA to this interface. VRF member, okay, VPC underline KA, that's it. Then we should assign IP address to this interface, IP address 10121 slash 24. Finally, enabling this interface, no shutdown. This is the configuration of the, uh, for example, ETH114, and after that, we should configure VPC domain one. VPC domain one, and then enabling the keep alive. Uh, we should use the peer command, peer keep 
okay alive destination peer keep alive destination is 10122 the ip address of the other side then source 10121 in the vrf vpc underline ka this is the configuration of the uh, switch one okay let's configure the switch to also copy the configuration of switch one after that we can uh, copy this configuration for the uh, for the switch to host name is switch to enabling feature vpc again vrf context vpc ka interface eth 114 on this on switch to then uh, no switch port vrf member vpc ka the ip address is 10122 slash 24 and no shutdown then vpc domain one and after that, peer keep alive destination 10121 with the source of 10122 in VRF VPC KA. That's it. Let me to copy this configuration and paste in the CLI of the NXOS1 starting from switch one. Copy and pasting here in the switch one CLI. As you can see, yes, we have as one error look at here eth 114 should be configured eth 114 let me copy again copy and then paste here okay now it's okay and also in the switch to we should use eth 114 okay and copy the configuration of switch to pasting on the switch to cli first we should log in and after that we can copy the and paste the configuration okay very good the first thing that you sh you can verify is the connectivity between these two switch in vrf vpc ka let me to check it we ping 10122 uh, uh, with the, in the vrf vpc underline ka look at here yes we have connectivity now we can check from the uh, switch to again ping uh, 10121 in the vrf vpc K underline ka yes we have connected now we can check the show vpc look at here in switch one show vpc as you can see vpc keep alive status is alive and this means that our configuration until now is correct and in, also in nxos2 show vpc show us that the peer is alive the next a section of the configuration is configuring the peer link you know that we configured the eth 114 for the for example peer keep alive link and i am going to use eth 1 uh, 12 and 113 for the peer uh, link let me to write here eth 112 and also eth 113 okay can be our interface first we should configure these two interface in one port channel for example port channel 10 okay i'm using the interface port channel 10 in switch one and also switch two and after that in interface port channel also i'm using i'm going to use the lacp okay after that we can use this interface port channel for peer link let me to show you how we can configure this part of scenario starting from switch one in switch one the first things that we should configure is that enabling the feature lacp because we uh, we should enable this feature to use it after that we should use the interface eth 112 command eth 112 is a member of the uh, uh, for example uh, interface port channel 10 with channel group 10 mode active okay this is the first command the next command is interface eth 113 again channel group 10 okay mode active this is the configuration of this uh, port channel okay and after that we should enable the vpc peer link on this interface interface port channel 10 vpc peer link and it's better to use the switch port okay mode trunk on this interface and after that we can copy this part of configuration and uh, copy uh, and paste it on the paste it on the switch to this is the switch to's configuration feature lacp interface eth 112 interface eth 113 channel group 10 mode active mode active again if you want you can configure mode passive interface port channel 10 vpc peer link and also switch port mode trunk let's configure these commands in the uh, switch one conf t okay then uh, for example feature lacp okay and after that interface eth 112 